Hey, welcome. And now we can have a test over here, which is going to say task registered. And over here, we can choose either yes or no. Okay, now to do this, first of all, with my explanation, you can see these two are going to be displayed from left to right, that is horizontally. And for this purpose, we're going to be using a widget known as row. A row can take multiple widgets, which are going to be displayed horizontally. And for this purpose, it has these children because it can take multiple. Sorry, this should be within the column and outside this pattern. And row and children. Okay. And the first widget of the row is going to be a test widget. And this is going to say task registered section and we can style this we can give a font size to this i think the default font size is 14 and we can increase it a bit to 16 and also we can make this a bit border font width font width instead of saying bold we can also say w Sorry, font with dot font with dot word font with dot w five hundred. We do not want it to be that bold. Let's go to next to save now, and you're gonna see it over here. Okay. 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 Wait for this. Great. And over here, we want to be able to select from either yes or no. And in order to achieve this, we're going to be using a widget known as drop down button form field. Okay. Right after this, we can have a trim comma and drop down button form field. This is it over here. And the drop down button form field has a property known as items, which is basically referring to list of items, right? So, what we can do is over here, we can create a list and it's going to be a test. So, we can say it's going to be string and we can call this uh, task options. And we can set it to yes and no. Great. And the next step is to map over each item we have or loop over each item we have. And now we can then say underscore as options, then dot dot map. Great. And over in this and see the type and we can copy this to say to the type of this over here. Copy and paste this over here. We're gonna, okay, we can paste this over here. Where should be the best? Okay, sorry. Before this, we paste this over here. And we can get rid of this. And instead of dynamic, we can say string or you can just say dynamic but basically we are expecting string or strings or test and instead of this e the e is referring to the value right and we can just say it's, it's going to be a type of string and value we can call this value or you can just call yours e and we can get rid of this type of function and instead we can return return Something known as drop drop down menu item and first of all we can convert this to a list in order to get rid of this error that's a list over here and the child the child 
Um, also, we can specify it's going to be a type of string over here. Okay, this is basically how you should do it. And you can always string. And the child is going to be a test widget. And we can call this value. The value over here. And we need this. Okay, and within the a drop down button, it also do has sorry, we do have a property known as value, and we can set it to value. We're basically looping over each item we have, and we save the variable, we save the value of the loop of the each item in this variable called value, and the value we're basically using it that is yes. We saved it here and no, we saved it here. And we're basically using it. And then we are having a test widget to display that value. And hopefully you understand all this. And for the on change, I'm going to take in the value that is a selected value. That is if it's either yes or no. And we basically want to set state in order to update the UI. And we want to update the class options to sorry what we can also do is we can create a variable via and create a variable via because in the future we're going to be able to store the value of whatsoever the user is going to pick that is if the user is choosing yes or if the user is choosing no and we can call this tax status and you can make this late or you can just say string and add this over here. Okay. In our change, we want to set the value to class status value. Okay. Save this now and Let's try this out and hopefully understand all this. This really took a lot. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and. Okay. Okay, now we can't see this because when using a form field or a test form field within a within a row, you have to wrap it with a flexible widget. I think I've I've told you this before, right? And we can wrap this with a flexible widget. Flexible. Look for an to save. And we should be able to see this now. And 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 wait for this a bit. Okay, great. And you can see it looks uh two. It looks uh two, and we can choose either. Okay, you can see we can choose now. And yes, no, and you can see this looks to uh a white. And what we can also do is we can wrap this with a container in order to have access to the width and height property wrap with widgets since we do not have it over here okay we have and we can set the width to 100 and see how it's going to look first of all okay okay waiting for this sorry it's taking longer i'm really sorry I'm really really sorry okay i think this is a bit uh smaller now okay great and also within the drop button form field it has a property known as int which is more like the place order and we can say select Okay, seems good. 
and then 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 okay and over here we can then say main access element main access access element dot space between and hopefully you understand all this and if you don't please please do what to let me know and i'm going to explain it for you personally and go check this out now and looks good and now we can wrap this with a pattern okay